This view of London is commonplace to another inertial veteran, Captain Olaf Abrahamson. Departing his hotel, he and his crew might be on their way to anywhere in the world. But today, Red Abrahamson will command flight 123. Destination, Seattle. Via a spot once believed accessible to only a super explorer, the North Pole. For the Clippers crew of 10, it will be just another waypoint. A routine flight which is part of the certification requirement for the new navigation system. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Bob. We should have a good flight to Seattle today. There's absolutely no weather problems in the uh, Seattle, Portland area. Uh, I have a Seattle forecast here. 140 at 5 knots. Unlimited visibility. Two octaves of strata queue at 2,500 feet. Five octaves at 4,500 feet. Portland is exactly the same. Shouldn't be any problem. Fairbanks and Anchorage are both well above ultimate minimums. Light snow showers. Uh, in the Anchorage area, but nothing that should affect the, uh, the operation. Are the uh, inertial coordinates on the computed flight plan? Yes, they are, Captain. You join the zero meridian just after Brooklyn's Park and then take up an inertial heading up to the pole. The route, as you know, is up the zero meridian, up to the North Pole, and then down the 122nd meridian, which takes you straight into Seattle. I see. 10 hours and 30 minutes. 10 hours and 30 minutes, they say, and an overall component of minus 9, and uh, the fuel burn is 133,800 pounds. Fine. Waypoint positions are keyed into the computer, which will provide guidance across the polar regions. The dual inertial guidance systems are linked to the autopilot to keep it on the planned track of zero degrees longitude, the prime meridian. Geographic coordinates will read out as lighted digits on the face of the instrument. If we keep our track, the numbers on the right will read zero degrees and zero minutes. Clipper 123 is cleared standard. Brecken 1 departed to Seattle. Expect flight levels 310. Clipper 123 cleared to Seattle. Good day, sir. Good afternoon and welcome aboard Pan American's Flight 123. This is Captain Abrahamson. We're now cruising at 33,000 feet and we're just passing north of Scotland. Our routing today is rather unusual and a very interesting and I'm sure you'll find a very pleasant trip. Our aircraft is equipped with the inertial navigation system, which is constructed by General Motors AC division. To prove its usability, we are planning this trip to go a little further north than usual as we proceed up to Greenwich Meridian to the North Pole. Then it's a left turn and down the 122nd Meridian to Seattle. On the west coast of Ireland, radar tracks the early stages of Flight 123. Each sweep shows the blip on track through Scottish control and on to Iceland. Iceland Clipper 123, how do you read? Clipper 123, Iceland, go ahead. Position 78 north, zero launch at 1803, flight level 330. We're estimating. 82 north, zero degrees longitude at 1835. Our wind 290, diagonal 50, temperature minus 59, the fuel remaining 98,000. Over. The giant jet slices through the thin atmosphere of 33,000 feet. The navigator makes constant cross-checks to positively confirm positions. Position reports will be made every five degrees of latitude as we ride north, 
up to the top of the globe. Sunderstrom, this is the clip for 123. Position 82 north, zero degrees longitude at 36. Flight level 330. We're estimating the North Pole at 1939er. The wind is 295 diagonal 40. The temperature a minus 58. And the fuel remaining 92,000. Over. Total length of the trip is approximately 5,000 miles. And the flight engineer monitors fuel consumption. Approaching the top of the world, night is barely felt in the 15 minutes that the sun rests on the horizon before beginning ascent. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Abrahamson. We're now four miles from the North Pole, and we're cruising at 33,000 feet. The inertial numbers rise toward 90. We are now over the North Pole, the North Geographic Pole. As I mentioned earlier, the weather is smooth and we're cruising at 33,000 to Seattle. And having been over here two weeks ago, you can see we're very fortunate with the clear weather that we've found. There are numerous faults in the ice and crevices that are very interesting. We hope you're enjoying your flight. Thank you. The only direction now is south, and the numbers on the left start to move down, as the numbers on the right seeks 122 degrees. The captain can get the answer to almost any navigational question. 1,958 nautical miles and 233.8 minutes of flight to Seattle. Then the exact geographic location of Flight 123 is instantly displayed. 80 degrees north, 122 degrees west. The radio direction finder points to Saks Harbor, the first man-made navigational aid in several hours. Passing 57 degrees, the system is still on track. But now the navigation aids of Canada's Northwest Territory accurately confirm the incredible ability of the system to know where it is every moment. The distance measuring equipment is tuned to the Fort Nelson Omni Range. On the map, it shows the desired track to be 21 miles east of the station. If Flight 123 is where it is supposed to be, the indicator will measure down to 21 miles and then begin to rise. Fort Nelson Radio, this is the Clipper 123. 123 was by a beam Fort Nelson, 21 miles east. At 29, flight level 390. And we're estimating 55 north, 122 degrees west, at 2353. Over. Now it's all downhill to Seattle. Seattle Center, Roger. Cleared present position direct to Seattle. And we're leaving 390, Clipper 123. 5,000 miles, no airways, few radio beacons, and Clipper 123 automatically nears the end of its 10-hour, 48-minute flight. Completing the final stage of certification by the Federal Aviation Administration and making Pan Am the pioneer in polar inertial navigation. The General Motors system now joins the Clippers and becomes a primary navigation system for Pan Am 747s, which will once again extend the horizons for air transportation. 